In this video, we're just going to take a look at the rendering quality of the light setup that I did in the previous three tutorials. The, I have the green light back here, and the yellow and the violet light up there. And then I also have the regular light back into the scene over here, except I've turned its intensity down, so it doesn't override the scene. But I wanted to give some illumination to the scene. In fact, uh, that way we can see these objects. We can see the results of this. Maybe t we'll turn this one down just a little bit more. Not much, but just to give you an idea. So we can see the other lights as well, the effect of these other lights. Alright, so I'll zoom into about here. And then notice if you go back into this tab here, see I've even got this render preview cranked up to 50, right? And then you start getting these kind of effects and then you get the dots all over here. Well these are actually very, very cool because what it does, it tells you where the light is actually going in the scene and you might look at it and go oh, that's a terrible render. No, f this was pretty quick that was only 4.76 seconds to render that but if I'm also ha I also have GPU computing enabled in here so otherwise that might be closer to 30 seconds just to get this quality of running. So you go oh, okay so maybe on your computer maybe you don't have a fast GPU card or j and you crank it up to 100 in here and even in a hundred in here, let's see how long it takes. Well, it's not that much longer, but almost 10 seconds. So that means, you know, almost a minute to only generate this quality. So you're enabling GPU rendering on here is really important. Or if you have a modern day CPU, that can really be very effective as well. But the important thing to know about this type of rendering is that sometimes I just crank this up. Maybe I'll put it up to like 3000 and if I'm not doing anything, I'm doing this in preview mode because this is how I'm working and maybe I'm just doing something else for a moment. I'm just going to let it run and you'll just see the qual how much of a difference the extra samples are as it's doing it. It'll start taking it from this grainy look. Even the see the little dots on the light just, well, I, well though I ended up recording this video, but uh, let's just watch it for a bit and just see what a difference the extra samples make. And already it's starting to look smoothed out. I won't let it run the whole way, but I mean, this kind of gives you an idea of the importance of letting these samples run. Of course, that's already one minute right there. Yeah, it can still barely see the dots on here but now it's really starting to come to life but it's still quite grainy and I'm up to 900 samples minute and 32 seconds and the reason this was running grainy in the first place was because I have the light intensity of these individual spots cranked way up I think I set them at about 60 for each one, whereas this overall huge light in the scene is set at 1, 1 1.1, 1, 2, so I mean just it's quite low. So if you need to crank up the intensity of things and you get that grainy stuff, you can resolve it just by letting it run. But now we're two minutes, you know, that's per frame, so this starts to get time intensive if you start trying to do an animation. And we're about you know, we're approaching 1500 and that's starting to look pretty good. But you could easily go a couple thousand, 3000, and definitely the quality would just keep improving and getting better and better. Okay, well, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next video.